peak of the housing bubble, many people across the country were able to secure the loans necessary to build new houses. As the bubble burst, a recession ensued and left many macroeconomists searching for answers to questions like these. This chapter will introduce the foundation for macroeconomic models. Here are the three economic models we will touch on in this chapter. Our main focus will be on the aggregate supply aggregate demand model. It provides us with a holistic view of macroeconomics and is the foundation upon which the other models are built. The Keynesian model developed by John Maynard Keynes focuses on the short run effects of shifts in aggregate supply and aggregate demand on the economy. The neoclassical model deals with the opposite view and focuses more on the long run impacts that shifts in aggregate supply and aggregate demand on the economy make. Let us look first at the aggregate supply and aggregate demand separately and then we will see how they interact together. We will begin with aggregate supply. Aggregate supply, or AS, slopes up because as the price level of output rises with the price of inputs remaining fixed, firms have an incentive to produce more and to earn higher profits. The potential GDP line shows the maximum that the economy can produce with full employment of workers and physical capital. This is often called full employment GDP. One important note is that this graph shows the supply based on price level of the final product as, and does not show the impact that the inputs of production may have on supply. Aggregate demand, or AD, slopes downward, showing that as the price level rises, the amount of total spending on domestic goods and services declines. Aggregate demand can be portrayed by the equation below. Aggregate demand is also viewed as total spending in the economy. This equation should be familiar with our prior learning about GDP. This represents GDP in demand terms. The following are three insights we gain as we view aggregate demand in this way. As consumers react to changes in price level based on income, they spend more or less. This is called the income effect. Both consumers and firms will spend more or less depending on the price of borrowing or lending money. This is called the interest effect. Relative changes in currency values have an impact on imports and exports. This is called the foreign price effect. As we put all the pieces together, they can aid us in interpreting past, present, and future macroeconomic events. First, we look at the horizontal axis, which represents real GDP. This is important because it takes out any impact that inflation plays. Next, the vertical axis is the price level of all goods and services in the entire economy. This represents the full basket of goods, or the consumer price index. Aggregate demand and supply can be plotted. Notice where they intersect. This equilibrium point is the current operating point of the economy given the current aggregate supply and aggregate demand curves. We see that at, price, at the a price level of about 160 and real GDP between 750 and 800, the aggregate supply curve becomes steep. This is a sign that potential GDP or, or full employment is near. Furthermore, we can see our current economic situation is not at full employment with equilibrium to the left of the potential GDP level. Potential GDP or full employment is the limit placed on an economy based on its resources, human capital, physical capital, and technology. An economy cannot sustain production levels beyond this point in the long run. However, for short periods of time in the short run, an economy can place unsustainable loads on its labor and capital to produce beyond this point. For this purpose, we will label the vertical line at potential GDP as long run aggregate supply and the upward curve as short run aggregate supply. The next couple of slides show how the aggregate supply and aggregate demand curves can move to the left, which is a decrease, or to the right, which is an increase. A rise in productivity causes the aggregate supply curve to shift to the right. The original equilibrium 
EO at the intersection of aggregate demand and aggregate supply, O, when aggregate supply shifts right, then the new equilibrium, E1, is at the intersection of aggregate demand and aggregate supply 1. And then yet another equilibrium, E2, is at the intersection of aggregate demand and aggregate supply 2, or AS2. Shifts in aggregate supply to the right lead to greater, a greater level of output and to downward pressure on the price level. A higher price for inputs means that at any given price level of outputs, a lower quantity will be produced so aggregate supply will shift to the left from ASO to AS1. The new equilibrium E1 has a reduced quantity of output and a higher price level than the original equilibrium EO. An, incre an increase in consumer confidence or business confidence can shift aggregate demand to the right from ADO to AD1. When aggregate demand shifts to the right, the new equilibrium E1 will have a higher quantity of output and also a higher price level compared to the original equilibrium EO. In this example, the new equilibrium E1 is also closer to potential GDP. An increase in government spending or a tax cut that leads to a rise in consumer spending can also shift aggregate demand to the right. A decrease in consumer confidence or business confidence can shift aggregate demand to the left from ADO to AD1. When aggregate demand shifts to the left, the new equilibrium E1 will have a lower quantity of output and also a lower price level compared to the original equilibrium EO. In this example, the new equilibrium E1 is also further below potential GDP. A decrease in government spending or higher taxes that leads to a fall in consumer spending can also shift aggregate demand to the left. Whether the economy is in a recession is illustrated in the aggregate supply aggregate demand model by how close the equilibrium is to the potential GDP line. In this example, the level of output YO at the equilibrium EO is relatively far from the potential GDP line so it can represent an economy in recession, well below the full employment level of GDP. In contrast, the level of output Y1 at the equilibrium E1 is relatively close to potential GDP, and so it would represent an economy with a lower unemployment rate. Here is how inflation can occur from a shift in either aggregate demand or aggregate supply. A shift in aggregate demand from A DO to AD1, when it happens in the area of the aggregate supply curve that is near potential GDP, will lead to a higher price level and to pressure for a higher price level and inflation. The new equilibrium E1 is at a higher price level P1 than the original equilibrium. A shift in aggregate supply from ASO to AS1 will lead to a lower real GDP and to pressure for a higher price level and inflation. The new equilibrium E1 is at a higher price level P1, while the original equilibrium EO is at the lower price level PO. Keynes' law holds that demand creates its own supply, and says law holds that supply creates its own demand. Both can be illustrated using the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model. If we divide it into zones, Near the equilibrium EK in the Keynesian zone at the far left of the AS curve, small shifts in aggregate demand either to the right or to the left will affect the output level YK but will not much affect the price level. In the Keynesian zone, aggregate demand largely determines the quantity of output near the equilibrium EN. In the neoclassical zone at the far right of the aggregate supply curve. Small shifts in aggregate demand, either to the right or to the left, will have relatively little effect on the output level YN, but instead will have a greater effect on the price level in the neoclassical zone. The near-perfect aggregate supply curve close to the level of potential GDP largely determines the quantity of output. In the intermediate zone, around equilibrium EI, movement in the aggregate demand 
to the right will increase both the output level and the price level, while a movement in aggregate demand to the left would decrease both the output level and the price level.